Good evening and welcome to a virtual Bible study here at the O. Uh, we give thanks and praise for God and for each and every one of you. Do thank those who perhaps was waiting on last week for us to get on, but we had a late departure from Tallahassee and it was probably after Bible study once we got back. But thanks for the prayer for the traveling grace and for the meetings that we had in Tallahassee this past week. So we give God thanks and praise for the saints who are prayer warriors who have been praying for us. Uh, for those tonight, we pray that you had a day today that you'll be able to shut down, shut off, and begin to focus on uh, tonight's lesson. And uh, may the Lord richly bless you, my dear beloved brothers and sisters. With that, I'm going to pray and we're going to uh, uh, jump right into what we have to do tonight. Uh, so let's pray. Father God, we give you thanks and praise for all things. Thank you for the gift that you've given us. You've given us so many gifts, but we want to thank you tonight for the gift of time uh, that you've given to us. And it was manufactured or put into place only for us because you are not bound by time. You are timeless. Uh, you are the eternity person. And so to that end, thank you for uh, giving us the gift of time. Then help us to maneuver, understand it, use it wisely. Uh, help us to realize that it never be no more. Uh, we have um, 24 hours, yet some have more advantage in those 24 hours than others. But uh, thank you for the gift of time and help us to use it wisely. And as we move forward, we do ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Tonight's lesson is going to come from the previous sermon, uh, Redeeming the Time. And there are some questions. I like the questions before so that you can understand and get some information in answering them. I'm sure most of you have already answered, so it'll be just addition. We don't have uh, our media person tonight with us to be able to look in the chat and answer the questions and give them to me. However, if you've already got them, you can email them to me. Uh, if you answer them tonight when you get done, you can email them to james.chester at ozpbc.org. I will grade them and send them back to you. How's that? So with that, uh, we're going to look at uh, Ephesians, uh, uh, Ephesians chapter number 5, verses 15, 16, and 17. That's what we're going to deal with tonight. That's going to be a mouthful. So, let me read that and then we'll begin to talk about redeeming the time. See then, verse 15, uh, Ephesians 5, see then that you walk circumspectively, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding what is the will of the Lord. So those three verses is going to get us to where we need to be as we deal with redeeming the time, uh, using every opportunity. This is not your SNH redemption store or uh, redeeming some points on your credit card, but this is using the redemption redeeming here is using every opportunity to make the use of the time. So it is just giving us some instruction. That's other passage talk about how to redeem the time, but we're dealing with Ephesians 5, verses 15 through 17. And so it is saying a person who redeems the time, uh, make the most of every opportunity, is one who look around and watch every step. You got to watch your steps in life. Life is a journey. It is a walk. Uh, it is not a bebop. But you got to watch where you step because there are some slippery slopes here. And David said, my feet would have almost slipped if it had not been for the Lord. So see this, first of all, as a yellow sign on the floor, say, watch your steps. All right? Life is a walk, a path that we trod every day. When we arise in the morning, let me just read the questions first so you'll know 
where this material is coming from. So verse 15 talks about what positive words and acts. And this is something that is personal, that you pass on which are imitated by someone else. Who do you follow and who do you imitate? What negative words and acts? Because they can have negative and pos positive. Do you ever experience the feeling of being on the spot, like your life is being examined under a microscope? How does that make you feel? Which person do you identify with most, the unwise or the wise and why? So let's go back to where we started at and we will look. So there are two types of people. We walk every morning and you got to walk carefully and accurately. There's two types of persons according to Ephesians 5.15. There's first the fool or the unwise person. What does that mean? Simply that means that a person who is unthinking, thoughtless, careless, uncaring, and worldly minded, that is a unwise person. An unwise is a person who gives little thought about where he should go and where he should not go. They just go and go anywhere. You got to give it some thought. Uh, they just arise in the morning to go to work about their daily routine with little thought about God and about what happens beyond this life. They are, uh, are earthbound is the word I'm looking for. If they make mistakes here and there, it does not matter that much, not to them. Making mistakes is just a way of all human life. Uh, they think that they will be acceptable to God if they just live a life that is fairly decent, honorable, and useful. And they pay its dues to God here and there. And there's a whole bunch of people who are morally upright and decent people, but they're still on the road to hell and they are unwise. The unwise person is not concerned about watching every step. Now they may watch some steps, but they ain't watching every step. And the key here is to watch every step. Uh, be alert to every temptation and pitfall in your life. And let me tell you something, there are some temptations out there and there are some pitfalls. So you gotta watch if you know it's a pitfall out there. They could care less about struggling and being exact and strict in life. Living a careful accurate, strict, disciplined, controlled life is not important to them. But on the other hand, Paul talks about a wise person. He said, what is the wise person? What does that mean? They think thoughtfully, careful, caring, spiritually minded. Uh, this is the person on a mission. Uh, they know God personally. They know that he's on earth to live a righteous and godly life to bear testimony to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Therefore, when they arise in the morning and go to work about their daily affairs, they walk in the presence and praise of God. Uh, they, their, their thoughts are upon God all day long. Let your mind be stayed on Jesus. If your mind be stayed on Jesus, he will keep you in perfect peace. Mistakes matters to them. It all matters, no matter what it is, if it's hunger, drunkenness, divorce, suffering, power struggle, off-color jokes, illness, selfishness, neglect, hate, on and on. The wise person is not only concerned about every step of the life, they struggle to watch every step to make sure that they walk through life in a disciplined and controlled manner. They just don't walk out down the side walking in front of cars. They watch their step. They know that the only answer to the evil and problems of life is Jesus Christ and his righteousness. Listen to what uh, Paul says in Galatians 5, 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Let me uh, back into that. If you don't walk in the spirit, you will fulfill the lust of the flesh. So those questions tonight was more for an individual to answer, to do a self-inventory, to, to do your own evaluation, not nobody else, but you know, and be honest with yourself. To what, say, what positive words and acts do you pass on which are imitated by someone else? Do you know someone 
uh, uh, that you imitate the positive for them, then what about negative words and negative act? If there's someone around you on your job, in your life, in your home, in your camaraderie ship that you are imitating, let me tell you, you may not think you do, but the scriptures say, iron sharp and iron, and so does the countenance of man. So, uh, whoever you're around, you know, the, the worldly way is that birds of the feather flock together, but iron sharp and iron. Question number two, do you ever experience feelings of being on the spot, like your life is being examined under a microscope? How do you handle these feelings? It seems like somebody's watching you and watching over you, and they're not watching, and uh, uh, don't be afraid of this, to bat you one with a bat because you messed up. But the Lord has his eyes on us. And question three, which person do you identify with the most, the unwise or the wise? Now, think about that. Be honest. Iron sharp and iron. So if you're around unwise people, chances are you, you're going to become unwise, or let me put it in a better way, you're already unwise if you hang around with unwise people. All right? So that's, that's what we kind of dealing with uh, tonight. So understand there's two types of people in this life, the wise and the unwise. So you choose tonight by looking at what you are being influenced by. Is it wisdom or is it unwisdom? And you make the choice, and you understand which one you identify the most with. All right? Verse, verse 16 say, making the most of every opportunity. Uh, that's what we should be doing. Uh, verse 16, again, uh, tells us that uh, redeeming the time because the days are evil. So which means be, uh, make the most of some opportunity, no, every opportunity. Opportunities, you know, they say only knocks once. Well, I don't know about that, but whenever it knocks, you better answer uh, because it may not come back around. So by redeeming the time, making the most of every opportunity, this idea is not to buy time. You can't buy time. Once it's spent, it is gone. And remember what we said, time is a gift of God. A man has time. God don't need no time. Time with him is nothing. Eternity. Say, though we've been there 10,000 years, yet we know less uh, years than when we first begun. So, a thousand years in the Lord's sight is but a day because he created time for us. So, uh, a man has time. What man do, do is use his time to buy things of value, which means not down to uh, Whole Food or all these Trader Joe, Winn Dixie, or whatever. Listen, this this thing can mean a couple of different things. The way to look at it, you buy things of value. A person is to use his time wisely. They are not to waste time. Time is a gift of God. Time exists. It is here with or without us. What we have to do is use time wisely. Use it to do the best we can. Remember what we say, unwise man don't care how he walk. He don't try to uh, uh, think about it, step anywhere, any place. He had none of that stuff on his mind. Uh, don't have God on his mind or anything else. But a person is to use his time wisely. It's not to waste time. You remember what I said, some people kill time, got to work it to death. Some waste time, you got to uh, save that time. So listen at this. So whether you use time wisely or use time foolishly, the bottom line, the choice is yours. The choice is yours. You can sit and twiddle away hours engaging in activity and conversation that of little if any value or worth. Some of us label it small talk. 
So you just using small talk or, 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 or chewing the fat, as they would say. Or we can use time wisely. See what he say? Wisely, and he he uh, he applies this to time, keeping our thoughts and hand, hands busy in our profession or work, contributing to the good of society. Didn't I tell you job is not just for you to make money, but to contribute to society, to cause others to uh, flourish rather than just survive. Uh, they should be thriving uh, in our profession. So uh, we need to use the time wisely on the job. What about something uh, in our worship and our service to Christ. This is ultimately important too. All day long, joining with others of God, church, and witness and ministering to the lost and needful of our communities and cities. Our cities, our communities would be different cities and community if we just followed this one thing. If we worship and serve Christ all the day long. So when we would witness and, and minister to the lost and the needful of our community and cities, uh, that's using our time wisely. Third point here, in meeting the needs of a world reeling under the weight of suffering, sin, and death. There's somebody we all know who are facing death. Someone we know who sin is ever before them, and sin can cause suffering. So in order to use your time wisely, you can meet the needs of those people. You, you don't have to say, oh, well, that ain't my business. That ain't my problem. I'm doing all right. No. It's saying, if you are wise, you will meet the need of a world reeling under the weight of suffering and sin and death. So, a person is to use the time by taking advantage of the opportunity that arise throughout the day. Now, it's talking about taking opportunity of good things, not bad things. Don't take the opportunity to steal something. It's saying this also is what redeeming the time means. It means taking advantage of opportunity that arise every day. So you can't just do this once in a while. Every day your eyes should be peeled. You should pray to the Lord, help me to see every opportunity and make the most of the opportunity. There's too many times in my life and just be after the fact say, oh man, I should have took that opportunity. It's gone. Chances are you'll never get it back again. So, excuse me. Redeeming the time. The believer is to redeem opportunities. Let me give you some opportunities that you could redeem. By living righteously and godly. That is taking advantage of an opportunity. Live righteous, live godly. Here's another bullet. To witness and share Christ. Think about that. When the last time you took the opportunity to witness or share Christ? Probably been a while. But remember, redeem the time. And, and we're going to talk about why should you redeem the time. Third bullet. To be diligent on the job. We just come through a series on work. Seven or eight weeks talking about the job and the work. You were designed, made, and commanded to work. And so that's uh, one way to redeem the time. Here's the fourth bullet. To set an example of commitment and discipline with work, home, and play. People should be able to follow your trail uh, to be able to, to, to do, uh, follow your example as a commitment, they should be able to, uh, because somebody's watching you and you sh using the time wisely means that that you're going to be careful with your walk because somebody's going to walk uh, like you. Listen at this little poem, Walk a Little Plainer, Daddy. It said, Walk a little plainer, Daddy, said a little boy, it's so frail. I'm following your footstep and I don't want to fail. Sometimes your steps are very plain. Sometimes they are hard to see. So walk a little plainer, Daddy, for you are leading me. I know that once you walked this way many years ago, and what you did along the way, I'd really like to know. 
Well, sometimes when I'm tempted, I don't know what to do. So walk a little plainer, Daddy, for I must follow you. Someday when I grow up, you are like what I want to be. Then I will have a little boy who will want to follow me. And I will want to lead him right and help him to be true. So walk a little plainer, Daddy, for we must follow you. What a, a great uh, poem speaking to the idea that we just looked at, that when we redeem the time and use it wisely, we must use it the best way we can. Uh, and so it means uh, contributing to society, um, meeting, uh, ministering to the lost of our community, meeting the needs of a world reeling under the weight of suffering, sin, and death. The whole world travails waiting for redemption. And there's so many people in suffering, sin, and death. So many people asking the question, why me? Why do I have to suffer? Every Christian, every believer should have an answer. The Bible said, be always ready to have an answer, a reasonable answer for those who ask. Uh, the question of theodicy, why do the righteous suffer? Sin brought death. Uh, one of the ways we can redeem time is, is meeting the needs of those who are less fortunate. Uh, again, joining with others in your small group, your community group, to witness and minister to the lost and needful of our community and city, which means that you got to go into the community and city. Uh, I was proud of, you know, that we do have some small groups who go, uh, especially on Sundays. That is uh, worth, worth talking. Here's another bulletin after we uh, set uh, an example at work, at home, and play. Walk a little play to daddy. To be faithful to God and family. God first, family second. Uh, and, and, and faithfulness is being uh, available to do everything you need to do every time you ought to do it with the best of your ability in doing it. Now here's one that really struck uh, which is good, but it kind of struck me today, to speak up for Christ and righteousness. It is too many Christians that don't follow the balance of speaking the truth in love. They either speak the truth, but they speak it so harshly, or they won't speak the truth, uh, which is not in love, uh, or the other way they won't speak it at all. But God wants us to speak up for Christ and his righteousness. When we see people in it, it's foregone, scripture-wise, you know they're doing uh, what is not right or taking advantage of people. You need to speak up for Christ and his righteousness. So much sin and suffering is in the world because somebody said, well, it's not my business. You can't get in these people's business. Yeah, you can because it's Christ's business, Christ and his righteousness. So, so that's, that's another way of redeeming the time. To pray instead of following, allowing time to be wasted. Didn't I tell you? Some waste time, some redeem time. But that is another way to redeem the time is by not uh, wasting time. If a believer commits himself to prayer, as Christ and Paul prayed, they will find that they have little or no time to waste. So, why should we redeem the time? Verse 17 it clearly states, because the days are evil. This refers to all the evil that confronts the believer as he walks day by day. That's evil all the way around us. When I would do good, temptation is there. So much evil that we must stay alert to keep from falling and failing. Scripture is very clearly the devil is like a mighty roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. You remember, I hope you do, but I'll remind you, 
that one, the same devil, uh, he's, under the command, he's under the auspice of the Lord, and one day he was reporting his activity, and God asked him, oh, where, where have you been? I've seen you in a while. He said, I've been going to and fro, trying to find someone to take advantage of. He said, have you considered my servant Job? He said, ah, you know, you got a, you got a hand on Job, and I can't do Job. He said, listen, I'll take my hand off of Job. He said, if you take his hand off him, he'll curse you to your face. And God said, you can have him, just don't touch his soul. And, and listen, uh, 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 here's what, what happened. He tried Job. Job lost all of his children, all of his wealth, lost his wife. But in all this, he maintained his integrity and did not charge God with folly. So every day, there's more than sufficient evil around us. But we have to be careful, stay alert, keep from falling or failing. And, and, and you know, in the military, you fall asleep on God duty of being alert. That's the whole idea, being alert. But when you are not alert and sleepy, everybody suffer. So... People must be alert to live righteously and to bear testimony of Christ. Don't let people talk about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ based on the way you are not being careful. And they begin to think that's what is Christ and question your Christianity. Now, they can question your Christianity, but don't you give them no cause to do that. The evil can range from mild temptation to persecution from small money problems to a world economic collapse, from a minor family squabble to a war. The evil of this world is ever before us, small and great. The task of the believer is to redeem our time, make the most use of what time we have. The opportunity will soon pass because the days are evil. That's why we need to redeem the time. Uh, and it'll soon pass. Uh, you know, uh, some say, teach us, Lord, to number our days that we might apply our hearts to wisdom. Let's look at a few opportunities that will pass. One, the opportunity to witness will pass. How many times have we took the opportunity, redeeming the time, taking every opportunity to witness him to someone? If we don't pray and look, that's that careful, look for an opportunity to witness, it's going to pass. How many times I told you, and myself too, man, I should have witnessed to that person. I should have struck up a conversation with her. Should have did this. But it's past. The days are evil. These people are suffering some of them. Hey, what do you do if, if you say, I should have struck up a combination and find out that that person is a believer? Only thing you can do is praise the Lord and hope that that person is checking to see if somebody else saved also. So the opportunity to witness will pass. Secondly, the opportunity to show diligence will pass. Only what you do for Christ will last, but you got to do it now. Here again, the opportunity to speak up will pass. Uh, we are dealing with the situation uh, with one of our organizations where the opportunity to speak up almost passed, but thank God that somebody spoke up and passed. Now here's one here. The opportunity to love will pass. How many times uh, we, we could have loved and the opportunity to do it will pass because the days are evil. The opportunity to minister will pass. Well, pastor, what are you talking about? The Bible say uh, uh, this is the priesthood of the believer. So we all are ministers in our own particular ways. And the opportunity to minister to someone, to encourage them, to talk to them, to lift them up, that will pass too. Uh, what about the opportunity to work hard will pass? I know some people don't care if that opportunity passed, but it's what God has told us, and remember, work is good, it was designed good, but because of the fall, it has become corrupted 
but in the original garden, God created work, and he did all his work in six days and rested the seventh. The opportunity to pray will pass. When we go to heaven, we won't need to pray, but the opportunity is down here. Let me help you out. How many times? It may not happen to you, but you may, may know somebody that happened to it. You're in conversation, and you're getting ready to leave. You and somebody have been conversating five minutes, ten minutes, or 20 minutes, and get ready to leave. And the person say, oh, please pray for me because of so-and-so. What do we say? Yes, I'll pray for you. And most time, if we say it that way and we walk away, we never get around to pray for that person. So the opportunity to pray will pass. So what do we need to do? I make it a custom to pray right then. Then that way you don't have to promise a person you're going to pray for them and not pray. Not only that, that person counting on your prayers and you would not even pray. Now you really want to pour salt in the wound when you see them uh, three weeks later and say, oh, this worked out so well. I appreciate you praying. And you feel cut to the bone because you know you didn't pray. Had you prayed then, then you could have attributed that to God hearing your prayer because you know you asked. Maybe other people asked it, but you know for sure that you've asked, petitioned the Lord for this request from your brother or sister. Now the brother or sister coming with a great report, and you connect the way it is. The opportunity to give will pass. That's not just money, and it will pass. But to give your time, your talent, your treasure, to give uh, anything, a drink of water, food, or anything, the opportunity will pass. So here's a question, uh, and, and, and uh, you sh also let me read the, the questions on this. Um, and, and I'll get to it in a minute. But how many of us waste time? Much time is wasted not being efficient. I'm trying to learn to be more efficient every day. I open up an email and say, oh, I'll come back to it. That may not be efficient. I need to do something with it. Now I have several things I can do with it. Um, um, so you've got to be efficient. God don't want us to waste time. The more efficient, effective uh, we, we, we become, uh, the better we are. We should uh, be become, so what I'm saying is there's ways to become efficient. Search for ways. I can't give them all to you, but if it's on your job, you can become more efficient. If it's on your organization, you can come uh, organization, not that your own organization, but the organization of your life, you can become more efficient. You can plan out your trips. Going round in a circle, you got three places to stop, go to them in order, not, uh, not just, just go and then you think about, uh, Oh, I could have went here. You go one place and go back the other place. Be efficient. Now, here's one here uh, that really get us. Uh, how much time is wasted watching television? Most uh, Infinity and AT&T and all of these providers, some of them got four, 500 channels on a television. Can you imagine that? Think about it. Remember I challenged you all Sunday and you need to send that in and with your homework. How much screen time you have. But we can waste so much time watching television. That is not saying that you shouldn't watch TV. But I'm talking about watching television when you waste time. Now let me just sh share with you one time when you're watching television that is not a waste. So you have to exclude Abbott Elementary from that. It's all right to watch Abbott Elementary. Uh, you ain't wasting time then. But other than that, watching television. Here's another one. Reading unsuitable literature. Boy, that can eat up the time. Time will fly by. Sitting in restaurants, loafing around home, not working diligent, just slacking. Uh, I'm learning to uh, be efficient. 
sometime now when I'm working and doing my job and I need to take a break. I don't just take a break. I go and do something, a two-minute, a three-minute job that I need to do, then take the break. That's becoming efficient. Engaging in unprofitable activities on weekends. Unprofitable. Now, that don't mean you're working and making no money, but some activities that are unprofitable. Sitting around and useless activity and talking. Just talk, 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 talk. It seems comforting, but it is a waste of time. So each of us needs to take a moment to think through where we waste so much time and correct it. It's not enough to know where you're wasting time, but you've got to correct it. More than ever, we need to give ourselves to make a significant contribution to our work, to our society, to our church, to our community, and to live righteously and godly. And most of the time, you hear the complaints that's going to be in this area. Complain about the job. I won't say that. I talked to someone today. Uh, they were just complaining about their job, their work. And I'm saying, you need to do this. You need to do that on the job. Well, I'm tired of being picked on. But you need to make a certificate contribution to society, to our church. And notice what it said, our church. One of the things, and, and, and you can listen at this and change it if it fits the idea. Sometimes I talk with people that have been in church, been attending 10, 15 years, and say, well, y'all church is telling you something. It's y'all church. I haven't bought in. You need to think about that the next time you say it, and maybe you need to buy in. Okay? Um, to witness and helping a world of people who are discouraged, lonely, hungry, cold, Hurting and suffering, needy and helpless, all lost in sin. What a pitiful flight. And you have the answer. I have the answer. We have the hope in Jesus Christ. And we should not be wasting time but trying to figure out a way to put Christ in these people. All without knowledge of Christ and of eternal life. How many people... They don't even know there's such a thing as eternal life. Secondly, there's some who know about eternal life, but they think it's a host because they've never been past the grave, and they see people die and go in the grave, and they don't know how to depend on someone who has been to the grave and back. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5 say, Casting down imaginations. And everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Psalm 90, we are very familiar with some of us. So teach us, Lord, to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Now, we look at people who are 60, 70, 80, 90 years old, and if you're 20, it looks like, oh, man, they are ancient. But if you ask them, they'll tell you that time went by like a blink of an eye. So you need to be wise and learn from somebody else and make the use of your time. How many times we have said, we're going to do this, we're going to go in business, we're going to do this, we don't do that. And we're just talking and go by. And the next thing you know, life will pass you by. So here's the, the, the final questions that you should have. This is very interesting. I really wish we had the capability tonight, but we don't. So here's the question. In the typical 24-hour day, how much of your time is spent doing these activities? Let's see. How much time, and, and, and you should have the chart, and it'll show the number of hours, prayer and worship. Do it even come up to an hour? What did Jesus say to his disciples? Could not you watch and pray one hour? So the number of hours, it, I mean, it's convicting. I don't think it's not stepping on my uh, toys, but it is. Prayer and worship. Now, it ain't talking about the hour we spend from 9 to 10, but it is talking about the ability to worship the Lord, to get away, to pray, 
uh, maybe to sing a song or listen at a song and just worship the Lord. How much time we spend at work? Let me clarify that. Some work too much, some work too little. Should be a balance. So how many hours you work? It shouldn't be 80 hours a week you work because something is going neglect. Now, there may be a week here and there that you may have to do that, but that ought not to be your typical, that's what we're looking at, a typical 24-hour day. Do you spend 16 hours working that day? Family time. How much time? And that is another convicting because life is such now we have allowed it. One go this way, the other go this way. We don't spend no family time. Here's another one. TV and video. Write down how much time you spend on that. Uh, videos now. Videos can, and I want to add that one because recreation kind of brings it in, but video games. Uh, I asked a young man earlier this afternoon, I said, now you got to teach me how to play uh, door slammers. Uh, he wasn't familiar with it, but we're going to figure it out. Uh, door slammer is a, is a video game. and It's okay, but you don't want to spend all your hours. You don't spend absorbent hours on that. Recreation. And here's one that, oh man, that I know I feel busted. In 24 hours, how much sleep do you get? Do you know, and I got a whole section, I wish that I, I may still be able to pull it up a little bit, uh, but I'll see. Do you know how many accidents happen because of people sleeping this and they don't realize they sleep? It is a proven fact that you really need to get eight hours sleep. That is nothing, and I know some online listen at this, saying, well, I'm getting older, I don't need as much sleep. That is not true. St studies and statistics have proved that wrong. Uh, the, you need eight hours of sleep. One of the things that will heal a body is sleep. One of the things that bring disease on body is sleep. We don't have to be iron people and brag on, well, I can make it on three hours of sleep. I can make it on four hours of sleep. I didn't think about this when I read it earlier. I still may pull that up. Uh, to just talk about uh, our health and how bad off we are when it comes to sleep. Uh, we don't get enough sleep. We burn the candle on both, both ends, but that is not good. Uh, that is definitely not good. Uh, so we need to, now you got the other one, uh, the other people who you can't get them out of the bed. They stay in there. They're sleepy all the time. Uh, but but uh, let me just look something up really quick here. Uh, yeah, yeah. For all of you uh, who who believe the lie that Satan had told you about sleep, there's certain sleep, there's REM sleep, and there's another sleep that is much needed. So I think our problem is more of a major problem of a lack of sleep than it is uh, too much sleep. There are people uh, who who get too much. Um, let me just see. Can I pull this up really quick? Um, I don't. I don't. But studies after studies have shown America and how we are so poor on sleep and so you need to get your sleep and here's another thing being efficient most well a lot of people have Fitbits or I, uh, Apple watches these things will track your sleep these things have the ability to turn things off at night like your phone so that you can get sleep uh, 
it can tell you how much sleep you're getting. It can tell you what quality of sleep you get. And it can even tell how many times you wake up at night. So there are some people who wakes up hundreds of times a night and don't realize it. Maybe you need to do a sleep study. Uh, there's these devices now you can put in your chest or you can use a CPAP. Now, one of the indicators, and not, I know nobody online fits this category. If you allow snore, you need to check on your sleep. So that's one of the things you need to chop. So after looking at prayer, work, family time, video, recreation, sleep, which area needs to be adjusted first? What do you need? We're not just talking to be talking. We're not going through these things to be going through. But it's to make your life more vital. And the more vital your life is, the more you can bless the kingdom of God. With too much recreation, just like that can be too much recreation, that can be lack of recreation. So these things here works both ways. It's just because of recreation don't say, hey, you did too much, you may not have done none. And you need to do some recreation. So which areas in your life need to be adjusted first? Secondly, why is it important to redeem the time? What kind of things can you do in order to be a better steward of your time? It's all about the stewardship. It's about always knowing that you got to do something with your time. You can't work yourself to death because when we die, all of us, we're going to leave some work undone. When Jesus died, he left some work undone. And he handed it off to John. So you don't have to worry about uh, uh, working 24-7. You don't have to worry about not sleeping. Because the Bible says, God, do not slumber nor sleep. And if he don't slumber nor sleep, there's no need in both of us staying up all night. Uh, it's going to affect me, but it won't affect him. So hopefully this has been helpful. Because remember, time was given to us by God as a gift. And you need to use your gift wisely. Uh, at least uh, you may not get an opportunity uh, to, to continue to use it. So, my brothers and sisters, how the believer walk day by day throughout life is crucial, listen at this, to the cause of Christ and to the welfare of society. You hear me mention this book over and over and over again by Dr. Tony Evans, Are Christians Ruining America? And I think the answer to it is yes, because we don't understand that the cause of Christ, walking circumspectively, careful, not failing or falling, is for the welfare of the society. They either contributed to the building up of society or tearing down of society. And you heard me talk before about the city of God, the city of man. And God, uh, the city of man, is sprawling everywhere, and God wants the city of God built right smack in the center of the city of Satan. Uh, they either carried the message of life to the world or they carried the message of silence and death. Which one are you carrying? And for this reason it's important that a believer walk carefully and strictly throughout life. Because your walk, your conversation, your manner of living tell people something. It can speak volumes for you or it can speak volumes against you. And the most things, a lot of time now, society say, well, I don't want to be part of church because Johnny over here, uh, he do this, he do that. They don't understand. It's not about a bunch of things. It's about first receiving Jesus Christ. We ought to live in uh, compliance with the Lord. But because it's a bad testimony, many are turned off. Not rightfully so, but wrongly so. So I trust that uh, this redeeming the time uh, have helped us. Remember, this is not about going through the motion, but it's about applying these things to our life, making an adjustment that we'll become more efficient in our lives, in our lifestyle. And I mean, these are far-fetched things. Some people are efficient, and they know they got to work all week, 
Sunday or Saturday they prepare all of their food for the week so they don't be wasting time. There's ways if you look. I know there's plenty of ways in my life that I can be more efficient. I can clearly say I am working to be much more efficient. I can clearly say I have seen some response. I've seen some glitter of hope. And I trust that the same thing will happen for you when you become more efficient in your life. As we get more and more to do it in my life, it just keep like it, keep adding on. We got to become more efficient because we cannot stretch one second more out of 24 hours in a day. God bless you. God keep us our uh, prayer. And uh, I hope this has been helpful. With that, I'm going to close us with a prayer. Again, we didn't have a media person with us tonight, so you get a chance to get out a little earlier. But you can bring that homework with you on Sunday, uh, and I will go over it because this is ultimately important. Let's pray. Father God, we give you thanks and praise for all things. Thank you for the gift of time. Thank you for this lesson. Help us to look inward, not at our sister or our brother, our spouses or anybody else, but look at ourselves that we might become more efficient, that we might carry the word to the world who's suffering and the dying, and, and that we might be better stewards of time. So teach us, Lord, to number our days because there is an expiration date on it. We don't know if we're in or where. But teach us the number of our days that we might apply our hearts to wisdom, that we might know uh, what is the will of God, that good and that perfect uh, will of God. Uh, and then, Father, if you do it for us, we'll ever be careful to give you praise, we'll give you honor, and we'll give you glory. These and other blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen and good night.